In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you Lord, you condemn to death because fear of what others may think suppress the device of conscience. How many times have we ourselves preferred success to the truth, our reputation to justice? Strengthen the quiet voice of our conscience that is your own voice in our lives. Let your gaze penetrate our hearts and indicate the direction our lives must take. Say between each nation, Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. Straight away, death is put before us in the first station. It was always the horizon towards which Jesus walked. He moved towards the, his hour as John Gospel, John's Gospel calls it. But now he comes, now comes the moment when Pilate announces it. The moment of death's announcement will come to all of us. So it is good in imitation of Jesus to decide to accept our death whenever, wherever, and however our Lord wants. We can get ready for our hour by dying to ourselves at least a little every day. Remembering our mortality help us to realize that we have only a limited time in which to bring our lives to fulfillment. The Church encourages us to prepare ourselves for the hour of our death, to ask the Mother of God to intercede for us at an hour of our death, in the Hail Mary, and to entrust ourselves to St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The second station, Jesus receives his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. There is a particular cross for each one of us. Its shape and size is different for you, for me, for the person next to you. What's important is to take up the cross not to drag it. At every Mass, we are given an opportunity to unite our suffering to Jesus by spiritually adding every shadow of darkness that we experience or know of in the world around us to the chalice on the altar at Mass. When we see the priest pour drops of water into the chalice, deep down within us we can say, I give you all the suffering of today's world, and I give you my suffering, my personal cross. Every suffering can acquire value. For all the ladies' works, prayers and apostolic undertakings, family and married life, daily work, relaxation of mind and body, if they are accomplished in the spirit, indeed, even the hardships of life, a patiently born, all these become spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In the celebration of the Eucharist, may, these may most fittingly be offered to the Father along with the body of the Lord. Lord, 
by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The third station, for the first time, Jesus falls. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. The occasions when we fall, especially in our day-to-day relationship to those we love the most, cause us pain. A great consolation of faith is to realize that God can draw good out of all situations of evil— Indeed, he can draw more good out of them than all the potential negative effects those situations have brought about. Each fall, then, can be an occasion to make a new act of faith, to believe always in God's immense love, to believe his love can work when my love fails, to believe that through our efforts he can intervene where social conditions might indicate despair. Love conquers all. We must therefore approach the question of the origin of evil by fixing the eyes of our faith on him who alone is its conqueror. The victory that Christ won over sin has given us greater blessings than those which sin has taken from us. That where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. And St. Thomas Aquinas wrote, There is nothing to prevent human natures being raised up to something greater, even after sin. God permits evil in order to draw forth some greater good. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The fourth station, Jesus meets Mary, his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Simeon had told Mary when Jesus was only a child that a son would be a sign that is opposed, a sign of contradiction. So she knew that following him would involve going against the tide. And yet, how alone she must have been among the crowds of Jerusalem. She is a model for us when we can be tempted to simply go with the flow without really evaluating it is what I am doing right. Mary lives out all the virtues that Jesus embodies, patience, humility, meekness, perseverance, temperance, and fortitude. Thus, the Blessed Virgin advanced in her pilgrimage of faith and faithfully persevered in her union with her Son unto the cross. There she stood, in keeping with the divine plan, to be given by the same Christ Jesus dying on the cross as a mother to his disciple with these words, Woman, behold your Son. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The whole law is summarized in the one commandment, You must love your neighbor as yourself. Carry each other's burdens. Getting up that morning, little would Simon have imagined he would have to come to the aid of a neighbor in Jerusalem that day, a neighbor called Jesus, carrying his cross. Each neighbor around me is a presence of Jesus for me. 
It's not that I have to help my neighbor, but it is my dignity that I can give a hand out of love. Jesus is there in each neighbor, waiting for me because each person is, in a mysterious way, linked to the one mystical body of Christ, and so another me to be loved as myself. The works of mercy are charitable actions by which we come to the aid of our neighbor in his spiritual and bodily necessities, instructing, advising, consoling, comforting our spiritual works of mercy as we for, as, as, as our forgiving and bearing wrongs patiently. The corporal works of mercy consist especially in feeling that feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and imprisoned, and burying the dead. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. I tell you, insofar as you did this to one of the least, you did it to me. Tradition tells us that Veronica wiped Jesus' face and the image, the name of Mar Veronica means true icon, was impressed on the cloth she used. The image of Jesus I see in the neighbor who passes me by in the present moment of life is always different. Perhaps Jesus, who's helped to be, who has to be helped to be born and to grow, to hear a word of encouragement and frank correction, or to be supported in order to die to him or herself and to rise again. But it is always Jesus. Each person is on a different moment of life's journey and to be loved in the way best for him or her at this moment. No one should pass me in vain. Being in the image of God, the human individual possesses the dignity of a person who is not just something, but someone. He is capable of self-knowledge, of self-possession, and of freely giving himself and entering into communion with other persons. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. <clears throat> the seventh station for the second time, Jesus falls. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The logic of the gospel is one of paradox. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can say that those who lose their lives save them. Death is life and weakness is strength. In this logic, every fall can become an experience of new life. If I allow redemption work its effects in me. Yes, because in the gospel, logic of paradox Every failure and difficulty at home, at college, in the office, in a relationship, in the neighborhood, contains a hidden redemptive power that can make of all negative occasions a springboard launching me to be the first to love, to take the initiative in reaching out, to expend our hearts in the care of others. In short, let the redemption work in us in today's world. By giving up his own son for our sins, God manifests that his plan for us is one of benevolent love. At the end of the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus recalled that God loves, excludes no one. The church, 
following the apostles teaches that Christ died for all people without exception. There is not, never has been, and never will be a single human being for whom Christ did not suffer. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. A woman in childbirth suffers because her time has come, but when she is given birth to the child, she forgets the suffering. The church is Jesus Christ's mystical body. He generated it on the cross. It is significant that this station presents us with Jesus on the way to the cross, meeting the women of Jerusalem. It is the women who remain with Jesus to the end. They echo Mary's yes, said from the beginning of Jesus' earthly life. There is a feminine yes of love, of holiness, of letting it be, of truth in love at the heart of the church. It makes up for the shortcomings that the no of Peter and the other disciples. The church's structure is totally ordered to the holiness of Christ's members, and holiness is measured according to the great mystery in which the bride responds with the gift of love to the gift of the bridegroom. Mary goes before us all in the holiness that is the church's mystery. This is why the Marian dimension of the church precedes the Petrine. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The ninth station for the third and final time, Jesus falls. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It is discouraging to notice how often I fall. It's easy to end languishing in a valley of disappointment and weariness in our personal limits. But for Jesus, that what matters is not this or that fall or failure, but to make an act of hope and live the present moment well. Listen to St. Bernard. Those who do not go forward go backwards. So I can make a proposal. Start again. Don't look back. What's done is done. Hand it over to God's mercy. Live the present moment well. Don't worry about the future. In hope, leave that to God's loving providence. Focus on the now. Hope is the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness, placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his clothes. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. In the first chapters of the Bible, we are told that God clothed Adam and Eve. He gave them dignity. Stripped of his garments, Jesus is a symbol of humanity's constant need to be clothed. By taking on humanity's sinfulness, 
Jesus' love covered the multitude of our sins. The fruit of this, as St. Paul tells us, is that we have been reclothed in Christ with the dignity of the children of God. It's up to us now to continue covering a multitude of sins through our love for one another, helping each other to discover our dignity as children of God, listening well to those who have been deeply wounded, trying to see things from our neighbor's point of view, offering friendship and making room for one another. Indeed, the sacrament of reconciliation which, with God brings about a true spiritual resurrection, restoration of the di- dignity and blessings of the life of the children of God, of which the most precious is friendship with God. This sacrament does not simply heal the one restored to ecclesial communion, but has also a revitalizing effect on the life of the Church. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The Word became flesh. He lived among us. Jesus, having loved those who were his in the world, loved them to the end. The Son of God who lived among us, reached the point of being crucified for us. The God-man is dying for us. This is friendship. This is more than friendship. It tells us that God has made us the center of his life. I have laid down my life for you. While at this station we think especially of all who are suffering physically at this time, we can also think about the movement of love that has reached this point. God gave up his Son for us. Jesus, the Son, gave up his life for us. Mary, the mother, standing at the cross, gave up her Son for us. Now it's up to us to give our lives for others. The links in the movement of love continue. In all of his life, Jesus presents himself as our model. In humbling himself, he has given us an example to imitate. Through his prayer, he draws us to pray. And by his poverty, he calls us to accept freely the privation and persecutions that may come our way. Lord, By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is absurd. God is crying out to God. But in Jesus' question, we hear the cry of humanity. And that question is the answer to all our questions. It tells us that Jesus has entered into all our ways and brought them into his dialogue with God the Father, who cannot but reply in his time and in the way he knows best to our cry. It is moving to realize how Jesus called to God, the Father, with the language of his mother, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Jesus did not experience reprobation as if he himself had sinned, But in the redeeming love that always united him to the Father, he assumed us in the state of our waywardness of sin, to the point 
that he would say in our name from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Having thus established him in solidarity with us sinners, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, so that we might be reconciled to God by the death of his son. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross and placed in the arms of Mary, his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And being in the form of God, Jesus did not cling to his equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself. What can we say as we see the dead Jesus being taken down from the cross? A prayer in the form of a promise. Here we are, Jesus, standing before you. We want to live in a new way, living the Christian life as you want us to live it, along with all who bear the name of Christian. We want to be a worthy fruit of your immense love. Here I am, Lord. It is by this prayer that Jesus vanquishes the tempter, both at the outset of his public mission and in the ultimate struggle of his agony. In this petition to our Heavenly Father, and lead us not into temptation, Christ unites us to his battle and his agony. He urges us to be to vigilance of the heart in communion with his own. Vigilance is custody of the heart, and Jesus prayed for us to the Father. Keep them in your name. The Holy Spirit constantly seeks to awaken us to keep watch. Finally, this petition takes on all its dramatic meaning in the relation to the last temptation of our earthly battle. It asks for final perseverance. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The fourteenth station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. At the place where he'd been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden, a new tomb. They placed Jesus there. In the stillness of Holy Saturday, Mary emerges as a monument of holiness. Christ has died, descended into hell, spreading his redemptive work to all people of all times and all places. But the mother stands in that powerful charity that bears all things, endures all things, hopes all things. And a new expanded maternity assigned to her by Jesus begins as John, representing humanity, takes her to his home. As our mother, she shows us how our hearts, too, need to be expanded in charity, in a relation with those around us, and to countless others, our fellow Catholics, our brothers and sisters, Christians of other denominations, our neighbors of other world religions, and perhaps above all, our friends of no religious conviction. The state of the dead is uh, Christ is the mystery of the tomb and the descent into hell. It is the mystery of Holy Saturday when Christ, lying in the tomb, revealed God's great Sabbath. Rest after the fulfillment of man's salvation, which brings peace to the whole universe. Baptism, the original and full sign of which is immersion, 
efficaciously signifies the descent into the tomb by the Christian who dies to sin with Christ in order to live a new life. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. The fifteenth station, Jesus rises from the dead. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus is risen. Death does not have the last word. From Easter Sunday onwards, a divine alchemy has been written into our lives and into history. Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes, history still runs its course, but there's a deeper story. We need not be blocked in the trauma of sin and division, suffering and death. In the risen Christ, when we love, we too can pass over from death to life. And when two or more of us unite in our love for one another with a measure that he has shown us on the cross, then we can experience amongst us the presence of the risen Christ, the author of life, with his peace and new life, ardor and zeal, building a new humanity. Christ's resurrection was not a return to earthly life, as were the case with the raising of the dead that he had performed before Easter. Jairus' daughter, the young man named Lazarus, as at Jesus' resurrection, his body is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He shares the divine life in his glorious state. In Christ, Christians have tasted the powers of the age to come, and their lives are swept up by Christ into the heart of divine life, so that they may live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. We pray now for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, around your throne the saints, our brothers and sisters, sing your praise forever. Their glory fills us with joy, and their communion with us in the church gives us inspiration and strength as we hasten on our pilgrimage of faith, eager to meet them. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Mass will begin in a few minutes.
Set me free from my distress, O Lord. See my loneliness and suffering, and take away all my sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We come to the end of the first week of Lent. We ask ourselves, have we been able to keep the promises? And if we have, we can thank the Lord. But if we failed, no doubt we, most of us have, that we'll try even better in the next coming week to try and keep the promises we made and give more time to Jesus in our lives. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives in the reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, If the wicked man renounces all his sins, all the sins he has committed, respect my laws and his law abiding and honest, he will certainly live. He will not die. All the sins he committed will be for forgotten from then on. He shall live because of the integrity he has practiced. What? Am I likely to take pleasure in the death of a wicked man? It is the Lord who speaks. I not prefer to see him renounce his wickedness and leave. But if the upright man renounces his integrity, commits sins, copies the wicked man, and practice every kind of field, is he to leave? All the integrity he has practiced shall be forgotten from then on. But this is because he himself has broken faith and committed sin, and for this he shall die. But you object what the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel, is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, we will survive. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Out of the death of, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on the daybreak on, and Israel on the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all his iniquity. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Let us rise for the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ.
King of eternal glory. Seek good and not evil so that you may live, and that the Lord God of hosts may really be with you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your virtue goes no deeper than that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. You have learned how it was said to our ancestors, You must not kill. And if anyone does kill, he must answer for it before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. And if a man calls his brother fool, he will answer for it before the Sanhedrin. And if a man calls him a renegade, he will answer for it in hell fire. So then, if you are bringing your offering to the altar... And there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your offering there before the altar. Go and be reconciled with your brother first. Then come back and present your offering. Come to terms with your opponent in good time while you are still on the way to the court with him. Or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you will be thrown into prison. I tell you solemnly, you will not get out till you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. We've just experienced the way of the cross. And there were many, many examples in those readings of what we should do and how we should live our lives. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling us in the gospel that we've just heard. That we support each other, that we help each other. We don't go around in discriminating anybody. We don't go around calling people fools. What we try to do is to try and help anybody that we see needs that help. And to help them in every way that is possible. And one good way, of course, is that we pray for them and that we are kind to them and that we speak to them and ask them, is there anything we can do? And sometimes, of course, you might be ignored. but It doesn't stop us from praying for that person. That's important. That we don't condemn them And we don't shrug them off as if they're no one at all. We realize they are members of the same family that we are members of. And that is the family of Jesus. And it's for us to try our utmost to do our best in helping them in every way. And that's what Jesus is telling us here. Jesus tells us what can happen to us if we don't. We will be 
handed over to the judge and the judge to the officer and thrown into prison. And we'll never get out until we pay the last penny, he tells us. What he wants of us is to be helpful. Let us pray that's the way we, live. we will live our lives. And so we stand now for the prayers. There is so much bitterness and hatred among people, so much enmity and strife. Let us ask God for the power to be true healers and reconcilers, that our country and our church may seek justice, peace and unity. And that nations at war with each other may come to settle their differences. Lord, in your mercy. For those in our society who are afflicted, may they not be crushed. For the perplexed, may they not despair. For the persecuted, may they not be forsaken. For the old and the lonely, may they find friends. Lord, in your mercy. May those who have gone before us in death know the refreshment of Christ's peace. Lord, in your mercy. And for our families and our whole parish, that we may live together in harmony and love. And we pray for Jensi's intentions, who is expecting a baby, and we hope that everything will go well for her. Lord, in your mercy. We pray too for, wow, we've got to pronounce this name, Dr. Andre Karunagavoni. for whom we're offering the Mass. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask Mary to pray with us and for us as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, grant our petitions. Help us to see and accept the individuality of each member of our community. Teach us to reach out to our neighbor, and together with them we shall truly be your people through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread. We offer you fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. 
Bless thee, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine. We offer you fruit to the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash us, O Lord, from our iniquities. Cleanse us all of our sins. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which, in your power and kindness, you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, our clergy, and all our people. 
Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Michael, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always truly wise, and free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope as in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. An act of spiritual communion for those who have joined us online. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things and we desire to receive into our souls. And since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you are already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. A 
As I live, says the Lord, I do not desire the death of the sinner, but rather that he turn back and live. Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Look with favor on your people, O Lord, 
that what they observe, what their observance outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth proclaiming the gospel of the Lord. Thank you all very much, and good night and God bless.